Welcome back. In today's adventure, we find ourselves looking at Nevada State Historical Markers numbers 151 through 155. So let's start off 529 miles away from our last marker. Located at the Idaho border is a small town called Oahi in the Duck Valley Indian Reservation. Here, only a few hundred feet away from the Idaho border, we find our first marker in this trip. Marker number 151, Duck Valley Indian Reservation. Duck Valley Indian Reservation. The Shoshone and Paiute people have occupied northern Nevada, southeastern Oregon, and southern Idaho since time immemorial. We lived peacefully until the mid-1800s, when our way of life was changed forever after European immigrants invaded our homeland. The Duck Valley Indian Reservation is within the reservation outlined under the Bruno Valley Treaty of 1866. On April 16, 1877, President Ruther B. Hayes signed an executive order establishing the Duck Valley Indian Reservation, seven years after Captain Sam's Western Shoshone first request for this valley. On May 4, 1886, President Cleveland issued an executive order expanding the Duck Valley Reservation on the Idaho side, sometimes referred to as the Paddy Cap Extension. In 1910, President Taft issued another executive order for another extension to the Duck Valley Reservation in order to protect reservoir sites. Between the 1880 and the early 1900s, other small bands of Paiutes and Shoshones drifted into Duck Valley or were forcibly relocated there by the United States. Some of Chief Legan's band were moved to Duck Valley from their territories in Paradise Valley. The different bands that came to Duck Valley from other areas became federally recognized in 1934 as the Shoshone Paiute tribes of the Duck Valley Indian Reservation. The membership of the newly recognized tribes officially accepted the proposal in a popular referendum vote on April 22, 1936. The Duck Valley Indian Reservation straddles the border of Idaho and Nevada and consists of a total of 289,820 acres. With 12,800 acres under an irrigation project, 268,816 acres designated as grazing acreage, and 8,204 acres for water storage, commercial, and residential areas. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 151. Now, if we drive 431 miles southwest to the town of Gerlach, we'll find our next marker. Located just off Main Street in the parking lot of the town park is where we'll find marker number 152, Gerlach. Gerlach. Situated between Black Rock Desert on the east and Smoke Creek Desert on the west, the town site of Gerlach lies in a country occupied for thousands of years. John C. Fremont traveled through these northern Paiute lands when he camped here in 1843 and named Boiling Springs a quarter mile north of town. This was also immigrant country. The noble road left the Applegate Lassen Trail at Black Springs, went past this site, and proceeded southwest through Smoke Creek Desert toward Susanville. The town was established after the construction of the Western Pacific Railroad in 1905-1909. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 152. Our next marker is going to require us driving back to the town of Jarbidge, 434 miles away. In a previous video, I gave the two best ways to get there, depending on the season. So I'll give you the directions again. In the winter, I would suggest and recommend traveling north on US-93 to Jackpot. Once you cross the Idaho border, turn left toward Salmon Falls Creek Reservoir. Once you cross the dam, travel 56 miles to the town of Jarbidge. Now in the summer, the quickest way would be traveling north from Elko on State Route 225 towards Wild Horse Reservoir. At 53 and a half miles, you will turn right onto County Road 746. Another 48 and a half miles of dirt road driving brings us to marker number 69 and our next marker, marker number 153, Jarbidge Commercial Hall. Jarbidge Commercial Hall. Gold discoveries by Dave Bourne in 1909 created the town of Jarbidge. With 1,500 population Jarbidge Canyon by 1910, citizens built this pioneer-type community hall with a floating maple floor. Support from the Nevada Commission of Cultural Affairs and the community funded the restoration of the building. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 153. So now, let's turn around and travel 409 miles south. As we drive down US-95, about 8.5 miles past Mina, we come to the junction of State Route 360 and US-95. 
We will need to drive down State Route 360 for a little over six and a quarter miles, and our marker will be on the left facing the abandoned mill site. Here we find marker number 154, Belleville. Belleville. Founded in 1873, Belleville flourished by milling the ore from the northern Bell mine at Candelaria. The mill located just east of here made its first bullion bar shipment, $9,200, in April 1875. Belleville was famous for murders, drunken brawls, sporting, and practical jokes. It was also the terminus and work camp of the Carson and Colorado Railroad that reached town in 1882. At that time, Belleville's population peaked at about 500 and included an assay office, an express office, a telegraph station, a livery stable, a schoolhouse, two hotels, several restaurants, and blacksmith shops and seven saloons. By the late 1880s, pipes delivered water to Candelaria and allowed local mills to begin operating, reducing the need for shipping costs. Belleville could not survive the competition and was deserted by 1892. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 154. Turning around now, we need to get back onto US 95 and travel south for a short 27-mile trip to our next marker. Here, in a dirt lot at the junction of State Route 265 and US 95, is marker number 155, Silver Peak, discovered 1863. Silver Peak, discovered 1863. Silver Peak is one of the oldest mining areas in Nevada. A 10 stamp mill was built in 1865, and by 1867, a 20 stamp mill was built. Mining camp lawlessness prevailed during the late 60s and over the next 38 years, Silver Peak had its ups and downs. In 1906, the Pittsburgh Silver Peak Gold Mining Company bought a group of properties, constructed the Silver Peak Railroad, and built a 100-stamp mill at Blair the following year. The town, at times, was one of the leading camps in Nevada, but by 1917, it had all but disappeared. The town burned in 1948, and little happened until the Foot Mineral Company began their extraction of lithium from under the floor of Clayton Valley. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 155.